I'm gonna show you how to use a Dallo. This is for the complete beginner. We're gonna go through how to pick out a template, how you use a Dallo to either create something for your business or to create something for your startup. To begin, you're gonna to go to adalo.com. If you want, there's a link down below for you to get started for free. Adalo allows you to design and build custom apps without needing to code. Once you get started, you're going to sign up or you're going to log into your account. From there, you're going to decide if you're going to create a native app or a desktop application. We're gonna start with the native mobile app. Then you click next. From here, you can start from scratch or you can use one of these templates. I suggest to use one of the templates so you can understand the overall framework of the application and then you can go and create it from scratch. I'm gonna pick the directory. After I select it, I'm going to say next and I'm gonna give it a name. Then I can look at advanced options. It mentions create new database, share database with existing application, use external user database in authentication. That's coming soon. Let's go with create new database. I'm gonna say done and click create. Now that we picked out the template and Adalo is making our app, we wanna make sure that you know something. There's a fun fact. We just did the 2022 no code trends report and we found out that 50% of no coders, entrepreneurs, creators are not making a single dollar using no code tools. And if you're watching that, if you're part of the 50% and you're trying to figure out how you're going to make this a business, well, this is for you. In that survey, you're going to be seeing how people are making over six figures a year using these tools. If you're excited and want to hear more about that, make sure that you click down below. Now let's get back to the tutorial. And now it has created my directory app just like that. If I move the image right here, I can see that it's already made the pages and the workflow already. To not be overwhelmed, we're gonna start from left to right on the screen. The left side allows me to understand the basics of the application, and then I can go more detailed going across the page to the right. For example, on the left-hand side, I can click the plus sign, and this allows me to give more details or to get more details based on the components and the adding screen. Then if I click branding, right here, this allows me to understand the colors of my app. It allows me to understand the primary colors, the secondary defaults, uh, default background colors, and default text color. If I click the arrow down, I can get the fonts. And here I can change out different fonts that will affect the entire application. The headings and footer. If I click screens, it allows me to see all the different screens that it's already created for me throughout the templates. For example, splash, I can click splash. And now I can see the different components on that page. I can see the text right here. And if I want to, I can change the text that change it right here. And if you look at this, I can either just click the screen and the icons here, and now I can see it, or I can go step-by-step step in the screen section here. If I click login page, now I can see the login page and change the components, the actions, or the available data. And we'll go into more of what that means in a moment. Next up, we have the database tab. This allows us to understand where the information is stored. Anything where it says database, that's just a fancy way of saying where all the information is stored. Without having the database set up correctly, you're not gonna have your data stored in the right way. That's one of the great things about Adalo. It already sets up the relationship of the database if you use a template. So sometimes that's very overwhelming if you're trying to set up the database, if you're brand new at using anything with no-code tools or low-code tools. Adalo already sets all those things up when you're using their templates. For example, the database here is already setting up the user information, what it's saving, all of those things, categories, and dates. So remember, the database holds different information that we want. The users, we can drop down, and this is all the information that's saving about the user. The email, their password, full name, profile picture, that's the information that it's correlated with. Now it mentions right here, connect to external data sources. Integrate your apps database with external sources like Airtable, 
Google, or any custom API. So if you want to take your data or store your data somewhere else and hook it up to your Adalo app, you can do that as well. You're going to have to start a free trial. Please note, if you decide to use external data sources, you're going to have to see with the pricing plan what you can and cannot do depending on what you're paying for and what tiers. Next, we're going to look at settings. This allows us to have the app settings, the app name, the short description, the app icon, and then we can see display settings, app access, copy, delete, and the API keys as well. On the next tab, we can publish. So upgrade to publish your apps. Switch to a paid plan to start sharing your apps with the world. Now, this is really important because you can start building for free. And after you get validation, or if you're going for funding, VC funding, venture capitalist funding, then you can switch it over to a paid plan if you want. Or again, if you're validating, people are paying you for your app, then you can upgrade the plan if it's right for you. Next, if we look at analytics, this allows us to understand what's going on with our application, what people are, who's using it, how many users, where are they using it, all of those things. And at the end, we have the version history. So you can save your design versions. That's really helpful if you're testing it and having a lot of different versions and you want to see what's working with your customers. That's very important if we want to have a version history as well. We click the little question mark. It says design versions let you save and restore different app designs, your screens, components, and layout will be saved with each version. Restoring will not bring back altered or deleted collection data. That's really important. So it's, it's just letting us know that the data that we have in the database is not going to be changing if we change the versions, but the style of the app will be changed with the version history. So it, it can't revert back to your database and all these different things, but the style, what the app is looking like, all those things, that's what's going to be changed in the version history. Now that we've gone through the basic features of Adalo, if you click the plus sign again, this allows us to understand what we can be adding to the application. For example, and we can search the different components, we can go to most use, which includes text, a button, simple list, app bar, image, form, or we can look at more detailed things such as navigation, list, button, simple, forms, and fields. If you want more components, you can actually explore the marketplace and they're adding things all the time. We can also look under installed and private components. And it mentions develop your own private component or add one to the marketplace, create a component there. So if we need a very specific component to be in our app, make sure you write down what you're looking for and then look if Adalo has that. That's really important because sometimes if you're just in this section and it can be overwhelming just, oh, should I add X, Y, and Z? If you already know what you need, then going here to the component section will allow you uh, for it to be a lot smoother. So say for instance, I want a button, right? Now I can have a button and I can see, okay, I can add it to that screen. After I add a component, now I can change that button. For example, number one, I can change the title. Instead of button number two, I'm going to say splash button. Say done right here. Type, it says contain button. I want that. Text, I'm going to say, I'm just going to change it to be click here. And if we look at this right here, let's zoom in. Now it says click, right? I can change it and say, hey. And so it changes right here. The icon where it says add, I can change that. And so the icon can change with it. It says icon and text. I can say auto. I can change the color. And so that's the text and icon, right? So the text and icon just change. Primary button color. Let's uh, change it to orange, right? So now I can make some changes. Also the type of like the rounding of the of the of the button. Now I made it more rounded. Shadow. 
I'm going to keep the shadow on. It says uppercase. I'm going to change it to just regular. I'm not going to have it all uppercase. Now it says click actions. Now I can add an action right here. So when I have an action, once the user clicks on the button, what do I want to happen? I can add an action. I can link it to go to another page. I can create a user, a category, a date. So I am going to think about what do I want to happen when they click that button. So here are a bunch of different options I can have. Notification, request permission, trigger notification. I can do custom actions, new integration. So now, like I mentioned before, when I'm writing things down on a piece of paper, what I want my application to do or what kind of template I'm using, it's really important to think about what I want people to do with my application. For example, if I'm thinking about Instagram or Twitter, think about what's the actions that you're having people do. Are they going to be scrolling? Are they going to be creating content? Are they taking a picture? What are they doing? The same thing with your application. You're going to have to think about when they go to the first page, what do you want them to do? Create an account to do a micro action or a micro commitment. It could just simply be when they click this, I want it to change colors. You've got to think about the actions and the purpose of what they're doing with your application. So the left side is allowing us to understand a macro view of the application. When we're going across the page to the right, it's giving us a micro view. It's allowing us to get more focused on what we're going to be controlling. Here, it's all about controlling the different screens. So the more that we do things on this side, now on the right-hand side, we're seeing what's going to be happening in the application. Again, when I use a template, it's already made the connections. It's already made the workflow of what the user is going to be doing through the app. And if we look at the little webs or the arrows, it's telling me what's going to be happening as they progress through the application. From the sign up to login to now the date categories, dates, and then going through this directory, it's telling me what's going to be happening through the application. And the beauty of Adalo is it's already made the workflow for me, so I don't have to I don't have to start from scratch. And that's one of the beautiful things with Adalo. Once I have the changes that I want, it could be a button, it could be a change of the icons, then I can go to the top on the on the top section and I can preview it. And now it's gonna be allowing me to see what the application looks like and I can see the different dimensions. I can change the type of phone and it gives me a preview of what it would look like. Hey, allows me to see the button. If I click other screens, now it allows me to see what it'd be like if I signed up, all those things. Then if I wanna share, I can share the app and send them a link to this or they can scan to install. And you have just created your first application using a dollar. Now, this is just the beginning. Like I mentioned, you can be using a template, but you can also create a new app and you can go through the process, design it from scratch the way that you want it. For example, I'm just going to say Doc Williams beta app. It has the primary colors of Adalo, pretty much. And now it's just giving me the basics right here. A sign up, login, and home screen. And then if I want to design it from scratch, such as adding a simple list, I can now already have that in play. Then I can go through it and create it from scratch. I can even say, for instance, just go and add a screen. I can add a blank screen. I can say inventory, and now I have a blank screen, right? A brand new screen right here that I can design from scratch. Again, I can add text to this. I can change it. I can zoom in and start building a page by page. But keep in mind, you have to then decide how it's going to connect to each page that is the section after you've designed the pages, designed what your application will look like and the purpose. But this is the building blocks of how you can be using Adalo. In the comment section down below, let me know what you're trying to create.
And remember, if you're just getting started in this space, you're an entrepreneur, creator, builder, or no coder, and you're trying to figure out what should you be doing in this industry? How can you get paid? We have the no code industry trends report down below where you can look at all of the different insights where we have talked to over 200 different entrepreneurs about how they use no code to build their business. If you want access to it, it's down below. If you like these kind of videos, make sure that you like and subscribe. We do this every single week.